There have been a couple of things that I've wanted to convert for a while now. One of these were some members of the Raptors Space Marine chapter, and the other was a full kill team. Now, seeing as we're getting some updates to kill team, I thought it was a perfect time to do both. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to kitbash a full five man kill team from the Raptors. Going into this conversion, I crafted a five man Primaris only kill team and gave them four of the allowed specialisms. I use these to craft the conversions and give each member a unique flair. The first of these was the kill team's sniper specialist, Tylus Darian. He is of course an eliminator, which is an obvious choice for a sniper specialism. So I began by removing the components required to build the kneeling eliminator from the kit before cleaning up any mold lines and sprue tabs. To give the kill team some extra punch and to benefit from the reroll to hit, I decided to arm Tylus with a last talon for that extra punch against tougher foes. It was here that I was able to make my first modification. To further reflect the sniper status, I decided to modify the last talon with some additional scopes found in the infiltrator's kit. They came with the magazine already attached, so this was removed with my clippers. Normally, this component would sit in a slot in the bolt carbine, but for the last talon, I need to make some adjustments. I compared the scopes against the last talon stock and checked where the trims needed to be made. Once checked, I used my knife to make a series of cuts, comparing frequently until I was happy with the fit. At which point, I could glue the additional scopes in place to the right hand side of the existing scope. My thinking here was these scopes would offer different visibility across the light spectrum, as well as being preset to shorter ranged engagements should things get up close and personal. Whilst attaching these scopes, I also removed the small wire from the current scope with my clippers and then flattened out the remaining surface using my knife. With the adjustment to the rifle completed, I could continue to assemble the rest of the miniature, with the exception of the head and the backpack. For the next customization, I wanted to reflect an aspect of Tylus' personality. While the Raptors are one of the more pragmatic chapters and less prone to things like trophies and trinkets, I could imagine Tylus being a collector of one particular thing, the trigger fingers of those he's bested in sniper jewels. To create a place to mount these digit-based trophies, I took some thin copper wire and bent it around the handle of a file to achieve a uniform curved shape. This loop was then clipped away and then superglued to the last talent's power pack. The fingers were sourced from a couple of places. For a more humanoid looking finger, I took an arm from the Crypt Ghoul set. Having long, spread out fingers made it much easier to cut away individual digits. Once I'd removed a couple, I glued these to the pouch, just below the wire. For some Renegade Space Marine fingers, I grabbed the left arm from a Mark IV Space Marine kit and carefully cut away and separated the fingers from each other using my knife. I cleaned this up a little and glued them to the pouch too. Next up was the head. Being a sniper is a risky business and while Talus is among the best, he only got to that position by learning from a few mistakes. The biggest of these resulted in him losing his eye and most of the right side of his face. Luckily, he survived and now sports some chrome upgrades, so to reflect this, I took one of the Iron Hands Bionic Heads from their Primus upgrade sprue. As Eliminator's heads don't use the normal ball and socket joints of other Space Marines, I need to make some trims to the base of this neck in order for it to fit properly. One of the final changes was to the backpack. Now, this is something that will be repeated across the whole kill team. Instead of using their standard backpack, I instead gave them each an Infiltrator pack instead. The small aerials on each of these would represent boosted short-range communications that allowed the kill team members to communicate over larger distances. In addition to this, I also added one of the Eliminator ammo pouches to the pack too. I needed to make a few trims to allow the pouch to fit, but this attached nicely and would be the start of the tactical aspect that the whole kill team would be given. In addition to the pack, I also added a knife. These were from the Incursor kit and I just needed to separate the pair and clean up the edges. This was then glued next to the ammo pouch. Now, this particular set of equipment probably isn't easily accessible to Tyler himself, but when operating behind enemy lines, I imagine that the squad members would need to carry enough equipment to last them throughout the mission. So these pouches and weapons would be used by the, all the squad members rather than just Tyler himself. So with Tyler completed, I could move on to the squad's leader, Ceres Corvaden. 
Ceres is also an Eliminator Sergeant, which in game turns will mean he can be dishing out damage whilst being kept out of harm's way, benefiting from his leader ability all the while. I began by removing the parts required to build the Eliminator Sergeant from the set before cleaning up the components. As I was planning on using a non-Eliminator head here, I needed to make some room for it, so I used my knife to remove the small, squared-off lump of plastic that sat in the rear half of the neck joint. Removing this before assembly is much easier to do, but once I was done, I glued together the torso, legs and right arm holding the sniper rifle. Being the kill team's leader, I needed something that would allow Ceres' model to reflect in coordinating the squad's actions. The obvious choice was a pointing arm, but I ultimately settled on using the comms arm from the Incursor kit. This arm was perfect because not only did it fit nicely in with the at ease pose of this particular model, but it was also a Phobos armor, so that helped to match up with the Eliminator's base armor. This was glued to the left shoulder, and while I was initially concerned that it would clash against the rifle, it lined up nicely with no adjustments required. Finally, a Phobos shoulder pad, like those from the Reaver or Incursor kit, was glued on too. For the head, I wanted something that would reflect age and experience. I've had this Custodes Warden head in my bits box for a while and thought it would be the perfect time to use it. The stoic expression coupled with the hair and beard style all combined to give an air of authority to this leader model. To attach, I just needed to trim out the bottom of the ball joint to allow it to fit in the neck of the Eliminator. If you've seen my Void Science guide, then you will already be aware that I'm a big fan of Space Marines having a more realistic equipment loadout. With most Space Marines seemingly carrying only two magazines of bolter ammunition, at most, I wanted my kill team to look adequately equipped. This meant pouches, and lots of them. Luckily, the kits I was using for this kill team, the Incursors and the Eliminators, all come with plenty. I added some pouches from the Eliminator kit to the legs before cutting up a four-pack with my knife. After cleaning them up, I then proceeded to glue two of these to the shoulder pad before adding in some grenades for good measure. Like before, I used an infiltrator backpack along with the remaining two pouches and a holstered bolt pistol. For both eliminators, I decided to keep their backpacks separate to make painting their cloaks much easier. The next kill team member was Nevea Moradis, the Reaver Sergeant Combat Specialist. Having a healthy number of close combat attacks serves as a good counterpoint to the eliminators in the team. As such, I removed the parts needed to build a Reaver from its sprue. In order to free up some space for the extra equipment, before I assemble the torso, I used my knife to carefully shave away the small symbol from the chest, creating a flat surface. Once done, I could glue together the torso and the legs. As I wanted to equip Nevea with a bolt carbine while still leaning into that combat specialist aspect, I needed to attach the bolter to his person rather than having him carrying it in one hand. To do this, I took the shoulder pad from the Incursor kit that would normally be used along with the wrist-mounted computer part. With my clippers, I then carefully cut away the shoulder pad and used my knife to clean and smooth things out again. This left me with a bolt carbine and a strap. But before I attached the bolter, I glued on one of the Reaver combat knife arms along with an Incursor arm that was also equipped with a knife. This resulted in an undeniably combat-ready Reaver. With the arms in place, I just needed to add a magazine to the bolter. As I was planning on adding this to the rear of the model, I needed to make sure that I didn't make it too bulky. Luckily, Reaver carbines only come with iron sights, so this wouldn't look odd at all. I took one of the Oculus carbine magazines, clipped away the scope, trimmed it back, and then glued it in place to complete the bolter's appearance. Next, I just needed to decide where to place the bolter. Having slung over one shoulder would have been tricky as I didn't have much space here, so I took some inspiration from one of the backpack mounted rifles in the Eliminator set. I started by attaching the usual infiltrator backpack and once in place I could test the fit of the bolter. It fitted nicely for the most part, but the strap did need to be clipped shorter before it could be glued into place. I really wanted to emphasize Nevea's combat specialism and I thought the best way to do this was to just add more knives. Dipping into my Imperial Guard bits box, I retrieved two of the equipment packs. Using my knife, I carefully cut away the scabbard part of each one and cleaned them up using my own knife, removing the small cross guards in the process. Once done, these were both mounted to the chest. While they were much too small for primary scale bodies, they were the perfect size to represent throwing knives. This addition of extra equipment was then continued. I added some extra grenades to the chest and a Tempesta Cyan Ammo Holster to the leg. 
An eliminator for ammo pouch was also added to the backpack alongside a fifth and final knife taken from the incursors. To finish off Nevea, I just needed a head. For this, I chose one from the Eliminators set, rather than a Reaver head. The Eliminators heads are great for this kind of hyper-tactical styled Space Marines, as they featured various arrangements of night vision goggles, masks, and hoods. For this particular Reaver, I chose to use one with the bolt head and the goggles, as I thought this completed the crazed knife fighter look that I had so far built up. To get this to properly fit into the Reaver neck, however, I did need to make some slight trims with my knife before finally gluing it into place. Next up, we had my Intercessor Sergeant, Kafon Osmosa. I intended to field him either as an Intercessor Sergeant or an Assault Intercessor Sergeant, but either way, he would be armed with a chainsaw, so I chose to base the model on the Assault Intercessors. I removed the relevant components to build an Assault Intercessor from the sprue and cleaned them up. But before I assembled anything, I decided to remove the Aquila from his chest. I used my knife to carefully shave and trim back the chest until it was a smooth, flat surface, perfect for mounting extra pouches too. Cavorn would be carrying a bolt pistol alongside his chainsword, so I chose to use the mag changing arm from the Assault Intercessor kit. But first I needed to build a silencer. I began with some 2mm thick plastic rod. I clipped this down to about 6mm in length and made sure that each end was nice and flat using my knife and file. With my pin vise, I then drilled two holes into one end, one directly down the center of the silencer and the other across the silencer. This would create both the inner barrel and the muzzle brake at the end, mimicking the appearance of the Eliminator's rifle. In order to add the silencer to the bolt pistol, I first had to remove the existing muzzle. This was done carefully with my clippers, and then I trimmed flat the spot that it had previously set. Once removed, the new silencer could be glued into place. Following this, I could attach both the arms as well as some shoulder pads. Now instead of using the original pads here, I instead chose to grab some of the smaller profile Phobos pads instead. This would help Cafon to fit in a little easier with the other Phobos armored marines in the squad. Taking advantage of their extra chest space, I then glued on a pouch and some grenades from the Reaver kit. As per usual, I added another infiltrator pack to the model before adding a knife and a pouch to it. Once the pack was in place, I took one of the belt-mounted chainswords from the Assault Intercessor set and glued this just below it. This not only helped with bulking out the loadout, but it also ticked the what you see is what you get aspect of kill team members. Before I added the head, I decided to add some obligatory pouches. I started with the Incursor pouch pack and made a horizontal cut. The two larger pouches were also separated before the edges were smoothed out with the knife. The smaller pouches were then added to the Intercessor Sergeant's left shoulder, and one of the larger pouches was glued to the right. Finally, another Eliminator head was used, and like before, I just needed to make a quick trim. So far, Caform was the only non-specialist in the squad, so there weren't really any specific themes I was going for here, other than just the same pragmatic style that the other members had. As such, if I was looking to add additional generic members to the team, then it would be this template that I would follow. And so I came to the final member of the kill team, Rezan Septin. This Intercessor Com Specialist was built from the regular Intercessor kit, but like with Cafon, I set about removing the chest aquila using my knife and a file. Once this was done, I assembled the torso and the legs together. For this particular model, I planned on having both of his arms occupied with comms related duties, but he still needed to be carrying his bolt rifle. Fortunately, the intercessor kit comes with a right arm holding a pistol with a bolt rifle slung over the shoulder. This was almost perfect. I didn't want the arm to be holding a pistol though, so I carefully removed the bolter from the shoulder by cutting away the strap as close to the arm as possible, before cleaning up the cut as much as I could. Once the bolter was free of the arm, I began to remove the muzzle as, like before, I wanted to add a silencer. Again, I used the same 2mm thick plastic rod which was cut to about 6mm in length and had two holes drilled into it. Finally, it was glued to the main stock of the bolt rifle. I wanted Rezan to appear to be communicating information to his squad mates, and for this I used one of the right arms from the intercessor kit that featured a Vox grill in the forearm. This was glued in place and positioned this just below his chin. Once the arm was in place, the bolter was then fixed beneath it. 
In order for Rezan to be passing information about enemy positions, he needed to be able to actually spot these enemies, which is where the binoculars from the Eliminator kit came in. Normally, these would be attached to a Phobos arm, but the shoulders on these were sculpted specifically for the Eliminator's camo cloaks. So I needed to use an empty left hand from the Incessor kit. I clipped away the hand at the wrist before using my knife to ensure that this joint was nice and flat. The binocular hand was then glued into place without the need for any further adjustments, and then once dried, I could attach the arm to the torso and attach another Phobos shoulder pad to it. For the pack, I again turned to the infiltrator set, but instead of just using the small aerials, I instead opted for the larger sensor array. I imagine him as the hub of the unit, relaying messages between the squad members and communicating with command elements outside of the team, which these beefier aerials and satellite dish will help to flash out. But even though he is carrying the extra radio equipment, Rezan was still given the obligatory extra pouches to hang from his power pack before it was glued to his torso. So by this stage in the build, you're probably already able to guess what my next step was. That's right, handy storage bits. Which is from now on is exactly how I will refer to any superfluous repositories that I decide to add in my future conversions. Like before, I cut, trimmed, and distributed these extra containers across the Space Marine's person. Which brought me nicely to the final task, adding another Eliminator head to the body. The width around the bottom of the head was adjusted accordingly before being glued into place. And with that, the final piece of the kill team was completed. It just needed to be based and painted, which left me with these. And here we have the full Primaris kill team painted in the colors of the Raptors. Now normally my conversion guides only focus on one miniature, but at the time of publishing this video my channel is about to turn 7 years old, so I thought a slightly more adventurous video like this would be a nice way to mark the occasion. It was also a great way to push myself to actually build a playable kill team force that I can use and hopefully build upon in future videos too. So if you enjoyed this kill team kit bashing video, please do leave me a like along with your suggestions for future members or other kill team builds you would like to see me tackle in the future. And with that, the final thing to say is a massive thank you to my supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Stuart Smith, Jeremy Kaup, Jake, Douglas Wilson, and Daniel Dowling. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee or you just use my affiliates links. And your help is what keeps this channel alive, and it's what allows me to build these different kinds of conversions for you. If you'd like to help me out, then you can check out the description for all of those relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.